Right now, I am in Western Germany. And over the past several days, uh, we've been traveling with uh, Andrew Biggio, who is the author of The Rifle, uh, along with four World War II veterans uh, that he has brought back here to Europe. And the experience has been incredible, uh, being able to walk the battlefields with these guys and, and hear some of their experiences. Uh, one of the men who is with us is a gentleman by the name of Jack Moran. He was with the 87th Infantry Division, nicknamed the, the Golden Acorn Division. And there's a story that he told us the other night about a battle that took place in a little city that no one's heard of uh, called Ormont, where he said he watched an entire town disappear under artillery fire. As you can see up ahead of us here, uh, this is facing to the east. Uh, so this is the direction that the 87th would have been moving in. And uh, again, we're approaching the, uh, the defenses of the West Wall uh, right here in this part of Germany, uh, or the, the Siegfried Line. I'm gonna move off the road here so I don't get squashed like a possum. Uh, but anyway, uh, right up here is a crossroads and guarding this crossroads were a couple of pillboxes uh, one of which is back here in these woods and uh, yeah it's a little wet and a little swampy all right we've got a, a little bit of time this weather is getting kind of nasty to be honest with you uh, but you all know a uh, bunker junkie like myself if there's a bunker in the area well I, I want to see it so again the the 87th is coming down this road right here and then right here at the crossroads there were a couple of German bunkers that were set up to to guard this and yeah let me adjust my lighting because it's darker than a stack of black cats in here. Um, yeah, here are the remnants of that bunker. Holy cow, this is cool. And yeah, I can hear... Uh, it sounds like the, yeah, this weather is just getting nastier and nastier. Yeah, so here's one of the bunkers that was guarding the crossroads. Uh, before you turn north to go to Ormont. And uh, this would have probably been manned by some uh, Volksgrenadier soldiers who were trying to stop the 87th from penetrating into Germany. Wow. Now, as I mentioned, today uh, we have Jack Moran with us. and We've kind of broken off from the group to, to take him to Ormont, take a look at, at where he fought in March of 1945. By March of 1945, so the very beginning, uh, the 87th had been in combat for a couple of months. They'd started off kind of in the Lorraine region of France. When the Battle of the Bulge broke out, they were called upon to come up and, and push the Germans back uh, across the border. Uh, had fought in like St. Hubert. I know they had moved to St. Vith. And on the 1st of March, 
well they got right up here to the Siegfried line and right out here in this field there was a minefield that I guess was just insane. One of the regimental commanders, I think with the 347th that Jack was in, said that it was the, the largest and most formidable minefield that he had ever seen. Okay, that makes sense, because I, I was coming up through those trees right there, and to my left here would be the, the minefield. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So this all open area was a minefield. This, road was, this road was not here at that time. Yeah, it would, this was a small forest road. Okay, no okay. no big road like yeah, this. Okay, yeah. And to your right, you can see a crossroad. Yeah, okay. And the road where your company K attacked towards Ormond, yeah. it's just behind the house here. And it, and it goes that way. That way, yeah. Yeah, okay. And the pillboxes are on both sides of this road then. Yeah. And the Siegfried line was like going this and this direction kind of. Yeah. So as I, so as I was laying here, the, the minefield, this field wasn't that big at that time. Mm -hmm. It was probably through that fencing right there. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was an extensive minefield. And as I was, I was dug in, I was dug in right, I laid right behind those trees, mm -hmm. watching the minefield explode. And the, the previous night, the fellows I was from, from New Jersey and I dug in, well, probably just behind those trees. Mm -hmm. And this, this, like you say, this was nothing of a road at that time. Yeah, it was just a small yeah. path. And yeah. he, he came stack. I didn't, I, I, my company didn't advance yet, but he was with a different group. And so he went up this way, and a couple minutes later, he came staggering out of the minefield. He was all bloody. <coughs> and he fell down and just past me and died. Then a machine gun opened up on us from, from up there, maybe 200 yards, 300 yards up there. A machine gun started just, mm -hmm. spray, just spraying the woods. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we kept our heads down for a while. And then we got up and started going after the pillboxes. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and the tank destroyers were with us. And they had a 90 millimeter gun mounted on a tank chassis. Very powerful gun. And they would fire at the pillbox. Sometimes they could hit the, the opening, the, the orifice, uh, the, 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 the opening at the contents, the, the people inside the pillbox use that to shoot out. Uh, but they, the tankers were just, they just hit the side of the, of the, of the pillbox. The pillbox had to jump. It really didn't because that concrete, of course, is four feet thick. But uh, it scared the hell out of the guys inside. And so, so they were, and, and they, they knew that they were going to lose. They, 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 were, they, were, they, were, they couldn't win. And so many of them were anxious to surrender. Mm -hmm. And so we uh, we took a lot of prisoners that day. We took from, from here up to the top of the hill, I would say, is probably a distance of 500 yards. It's a bit further. A little bit further. Yeah. Okay, yeah, a bit, yeah. And, and there was uh, oh God, maybe maybe a dozen pillboxes in that distance. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Uh, and, and we had we had to knock each now the, the pillbox protected each other. They overlap. Yep. Yeah. And uh, so, so we had to knock out this guy before we went after this guy. And uh, so, so it wasn't it was not a fast movement. It was, it was a slow, slow movement going after these pillboxes. Mm -hmm. so, so, so there you can definitely see the remains of one of the pillboxes, like in the forest. Yeah, you see that mound there. Yeah. Uh huh. And the pillbox just like collapsed a bit to this side. So we were looking on the roof of it. Uh -huh. yeah. so okay, can, I, can I get a picture from someplace? Is there, is there? We drive up the road now yeah. and probably there are other pillboxes and even the two pillboxes you remembered. Yeah. Yeah. So we go there now? Yeah. Okay. So then we go back to the car? Yeah, absolutely. And this, is, this is cold country. Watch this wow. Yep.
All right, we've moved closer to the village of Ormont and I've parked up ahead, but I've walked back up here because I, I want to show something. So Company K of the 347th Regiment of the 87th Infantry Division was tasked with moving in to Ormont. Okay, this is part of Jack's outfit. He was in Company K. Uh, they had a couple of tanks and a couple of tank destroyers uh, that were with them. And when they got right here to this bend in the road, so they're, they're moving in this direction right here to the north, uh, that's south. But when they got to this bend in the road, well, there was this large roadblock of Abati uh, with some dugouts on either side. And the, the officers who saw it said it was the most perfectly uh, constructed defensive position that they had come across yet. All right, now I'm not going to walk all the way up there because I'm starting to feel some raindrops on me here. Um, again, the weather's just nasty but but right up here is where that big roadblock would have been uh, so there were a couple of dugouts on either side and jack and company k are moving in this direction right here so they ended up clearing the defenses uh, but they didn't have the capabilities to clear the roadblock so they ended up uh, calling in the engineers this would have been about between 6 30 and 8 30 in the morning that all this is happening uh, and then they end up really just kind of constructing a path to go around. So you would have had one platoon on one side of the road and another platoon on the other. And then they started making their way north to Ormont. And guarding the gate to Ormont was a couple of pillboxes. Guessing that we were on that hill back there. Probably, but this is one of the last two pillboxes. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. So these are the remains. If you go around here, okay. yeah. follow me. Here. Yeah, because there's a pillbox on both sides of it. Yeah, so this was the pillbox on the right side of the road, and there was another one on the left side. But in, the, in, in the woods there? Yeah, in the woods. But after you took over the area here, yeah. the demolition uh, guys, like they put a lot of TNT into the bunkers and they destroyed them. Yeah. So that if the Germans took over the area again, they could not use the bunkers again. Yep. So, yep. But here you can clearly see the remains of the concrete. Oh yeah. So, but the bunker collapsed. And if you go around here, you can still see a bit more. Well, it could be right with it. I don't need a world clock, I need a camera. <laughs> Come on, camera. Okay, here we are. Yeah, that's... Jake, that that was one on the, on my left. Yeah, and, and so obviously we were up here. There's no toys about that. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look to your left, Jake. Jake. Hey, look at this. Oh yeah. Yeah, you can see the opening there. Yeah, that, there's Ormond. Yeah. Yeah. So there you can see the church of Ormond. Yeah. And we we were probably on, on, right up there. Up on the mountain here? Yeah. yeah, on top there. I don't remember who all was there, but the, the captain was there and and the 
there were several several tank destroyers with us. And because the Germans had fled now, the Germans were, were firing at us just the last pillbox had fired at us. And then the, the captain decided it was too risky to go, since the Germans had all fled into, into Ormont, we couldn't just go op into all this open area and, and have them shoot us up as we came through there. So, so he said, let's, let's call in Corps Artillery. And Corps Artillery uh, was called and pretty, pretty soon you hear the rumble of the big guns miles away. I don't know, probably 10, 12 miles back, the, the 240 long rifles, and then the 250, 240 howitzers, then the 155 long rifles, and the 155 howitzers, the 105 long rifles, then the 105 howitzers. And they all fired so that all the shells arrived at the same moment on, on top of that small, small town down there. The word, it was the greatest sight I ever saw in my life. To just the city just erupted. I could see the I could see the shells going over. Normally, if just one shell goes over, you can't see it. But when there's hundreds of shells going over, one time you could see flickers in the air as as the, sh as the shells and, uh, and and the noise that they made. And then as the as the sound was fading away from all those explosions. I was standing right near the captain. He said, that let the bastards know we're coming. And uh, he was a very tough, tough old bird. So as soon as that stopped, we started down the hill. The tank destroyers were rolling along right beside us in case there were some tanks down there that, that would give us a bad time. And there, there might have been, I don't know, 60 or 70 of us firing our M1s from the hip. And you fire real fast with an M1, of course. And then we had our a bag of clips right here, grab a new clip, shove it in, bang, 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 keep on going. And my number two man in my squad was a young German boy from North Dakota. And he uh, interp interpreted for us. And, and when that sh tremendous shelling was over and we moved into the town and, and made sure the Germans had fled, and they were, of course, the Germans were scared to death at this point in time. We found, it, found an old couple down in the basement of one of those homes down there. And of course, old at that time might have been 60 or 65, but not, not now. And this old lady told my, my friend Utter, Harold Utter, she said, I thought it was the end of the world. That's how, that's how, dominant, that's how dominant force that was. So we stayed there for uh, the, the Germans left their dead behind, but they they couldn't they can't couldn't take them with them. But they took their wounded and fled, and uh, just into the next defensive area. Two day, two nights later, we had moved into a top of a hill, probably just um, two miles from here or so, and the Germans threw threw an awful bar barrage of 88s at us. The worst shelling I ever experienced. It just I don't see how we survived it. It was, it was so strong, but they were a little bit irritated because of what we'd done to them up here. I have no idea how many civilians that got killed that night. Uh, cer certainly, some of them did, and some and some Germans. But uh, an amazing sight. It was good to get back into a building again down there because we we go for days without being in a building and and now that occurred in uh, early March of 1945 and uh, after this we headed we we're heading for the for the for the, for the Rhine River of course. Yep, that's and it was 78 years ago, almost on the dot. <laughs> Just a few days now, because it's March. No kidding. Yeah, it's March. Yeah, yeah. You know, maybe we're, we're a couple of weeks late, but 
But yes, this week we're doing a lot of 78th anniversaries. Exactly. Isn't that yeah. great? Yeah, that's yeah. great. That's but this amazing. is my first time on the Siegfried line yeah. with a, a veteran from the 87th, which is one of my favorite divisions. So I'm so glad you came from warm California yeah. to chilly Germany. I was so glad you put this thing together. I love you. You, you, yep. you did a great job. You, well, you did a fantastic job of organizing. And, and, uh, well, this man helped us raise $20,000 towards the trip. Imagine that. <laughs> You know, I'd love to get a photo with you holding me your okay. 347th Regiment book in front of the pillbox, I guess. That'd be yeah. pretty cool picture. Yeah. Ask her to cut the engine. Yeah, because the night before that minefield incident, we went through dragon sheath. But it, it, it was these must these must go up and curl it around or something because we're too far. Yeah, we're too far in this direction. Right, let's go over here and take a look at them. So these are not the dragon teeth where you crossed it, but it's close by. But yeah. Dragon's teeth, they are not in uh, in all the areas, they are not there anymore because uh, they were in a lot of places, they were destroyed. Yeah. Yeah. But I wanted to show you some at least. Mm -hmm. Should you walk up a bit? No, it's yeah. too, too okay. damn cold. Jack, can you tell me a little bit about you guys approaching the Siegfried line and the dragon's teeth and like what, yeah. what these are used for? Yeah. yeah, we approached them late in the afternoon one day we, we, after marching somewhat. We came to the dragon's teeth and uh, we didn't want to go in there and do any more fighting that time of day. So we we uh, just walked through, you could walk through, of course, the dragon's teeth. We walked through, just went another 30, 40, 50 yards and, and dug in for the night. And then the next morning we, next morning we had that minefield problem. But uh, the, 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 when you think about all the money that they wasted putting in these stupid things like this, in modern, modern warfare they, they couldn't stop anything. You just go flying right over them. We're, we're bombing them out of existence. Now this goes lo look at long goes a long way up that road. Yeah. Yeah. And then it must either go around that way or go through this group over here and go along the road up to the top of the hill practically. Okay, so this line of the secret of the dragon teeth is going up. Yeah. All the way this direction, yeah. and then it turns into the forest where yeah. you were. But in the forest, the dragon teeth are not there anymore. Yeah. Like, yeah. At, like at the same spot where you crossed them, mm -hmm. they are not there anymore. Yeah. What yeah. Uh, What did the tanks do to, to get across these? Uh, big pardon? How, how did like the your the tanks and everything and tank destroyers get through these things? Uh, that's a good question. I didn't see them actually go through them, but. Uh, I think, I suppose the engineers, just all they had to do was blow out two of these and you, you, you got a road leading in, and, and so it wasn't, wasn't much of an obstacle. Huh. Something else to see, looks like it's, uh, looks like they got a little bit more moss on them uh, <laughs> since you were here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. So, so, so stupid. But uh, that was that World War I mentality. They just, uh, they, nothing, nothing could stop us. 